The only medical university in the Republic shifted to fast-track learning program. Thanks to Kazakhstani doctors at the home front, more than 70% of the wounded were returned to the line. Speaking about victory, soldiers won the war. But today we're declaring good faith that we had two victories, won two wars. One of them was won by our soldiers, and the second one was won by our doctors. Because up to 78% of the wounded got back to the front. It is a huge number. For example, Azabek Kuatev. He died on April the 28th in 1945. He saved up to 1,000 wounded, conducted thousands of surgeries and treated 350 people with shock. Shock means death. December the 29th, 1941. Today is a happy day. Finally, we got a letter from Dad. As Mom and I were not at home, Aunt Maya gave us letter in the evening. When she gave us the letter, she cried and my mother cried too. I also had tears, probably because of joy. Dad wrote, I'm sending warm greetings from the front to my dear wife and son. May my love and care about you keep you safe. Here, every hour and day I think about you. We have heavy fights, many people died, many have been sent to the medical unit. But I hold on. I really want to beat the enemy faster and return back to you, my dears. Then my mother and I sat for a long time and kept silence. Only one thought in my head was constantly beating. Dad is alive. Dad is alive. During one month in years of war, up to 70 million letters were delivered to the front. The staff of Postal Service worked day and night to prevent interruptions and delays, realizing how important each letter is. Sometimes postmen died. The bag that was left on the battlefield, letters stained with blood, were taken by other workers who went behind. From today's perspective, we sometimes underestimate our ancestors. But we need to pay attention to the fact that every day, every minute, every work of every person was a contribution to the victory. Total rejection. That was war. That was grief. God forbid to repeat it all. The only thoughts were about enemy who attacked and went all over the country. How to hide, how to push him away. The year 1941, ambulance trains began to arrive in Kazakhstan. At the beginning of the war, the Red Army was defeated. Minsk and other adjacent cities were already under occupation. The same situation prevailed in the entire front line from Barents to the Black Sea. That's why the wounded began to arrive to the territory of the Republic immediately after the first casualties. The relocation of evacuation hospitals has begun. And already in March of 1942, there were about 78 posts for reception of the wounded. 
There were more than 11 evacuation hospitals in the city. They were located in schools, in old pre-war schools, in school number 28, where Manshuk Mamatova studied, in schools 35, 33, 54, and in other institutions adapted for hospitals. At that time, there was one specialized institute in the Republic which prepared medical personnel. On July the 23rd, the day after the declaration of war, a general meeting of students and teachers was held in the auditorium number three. Immediately after that, there was a stack of statements on the table from students asking to be volunteers on the front. Higher grade students went to the front already as military field surgeons, doctors and therapists. Students of first and second years of study went as ordinary soldiers. Roman Samarin went to the front with other graduates of the Almaty Medical Institute in 1941. He served as a junior military doctor of 8th Guards Division of General Panfilov. In 1942, he became a team doctor, then head of the sanitary service. The museum has the originals of his frontline letters. In the Central State Archive of the Republic of Kazakhstan, I found interesting document dated 1938 about the transformation of schools into hospitals in case of war. At that time, the Finnish war was foreseen and four new schools, modern at that time, were chosen to be transformed into hospitals for the wounded. One of those four schools was this school number 36 in Almaty. The medical battalion of the Panfilov division was formed in July of August of 1941 in this school. On September the 1st, children went to school here. When the first wounded began to arrive, this school was turned into a hospital. In when the war began in 1941, I was still a schoolboy. Then the school was closed. At that time, we all started to look for work. In the Red Star Artel, we opened a shoe repair shop. There were four boys and two adults. And it was very scary when they brought the wounded on freight trains. The wounded laid on the shelves, which were on the height of half a meter from the floor. Everything was heated by a stove, by a small metal stove. In 1941, the Committee of Support of Wounded and Sick Fighters and Commanders of the Red Army was organized. As a result of competent field work, evacuation hospitals were opened all over the Republic in a short time. During the war, there was a school on the opposite side. There was also the building of the city executive committee. There was a hospital. I worked with people who worked as surgeons in this hospital, and they said that people came from the front almost every day. Therefore, there were three hospitals in the old part of October city. Только было три госпиталя. 
If we talk about Jambil residents during the war years, I must say that I was very surprised by the letter from the frontline soldiers who were treated in the hospitals of Jambil. The hospital was opened in our first school, and people who recovered and went back to the front wrote letters of gratitude, that they were grateful for the treatment and warmth. January of 1942. It is very cold outside. I cannot longer work at the factory. I am very ill. Mom made a decoction of what we had. It was so nasty. But it didn't work. We went to the hospital, which is located at my school from now. It is nearby. There are so many people injured. I remember one man. He was all bandaged. He just silently laid and looked at the ceiling. Despite the fact that medical institutions and evacuation hospitals were relocated to Kazakhstan, there was a catastrophically low amount of local professionals. The local population was connected to work with the wounded. Women and children again took the place of those who went to the front. On August the 3rd in 1941, the Aktober Region Committee of Communist Party decided to create evacuation hospitals. Four of them were created in the city of Aktober, Alga, Shalkar, for 1,700 people. Nine. Ten-year-old girls worked at these hospitals and helped our wounded soldiers. 615 women became donors at that time. Two of them received the title of the donor of the Soviet Union. Their names were Lugovskaya and Radich. Due to the amount of wounded who were coming almost daily, there were not enough donors' blood. So something new had to be invented. Medical scientists, doctors who arrived here, and doctors who worked here played a large role. For example, Professor Polosukin created an anti-shock fluid. Sisganov was the initiator of the first blood transfusion station. It was very important at that time. I must say that the result of help of medical scientists, doctors and nurses was in 70 to 75 percent of the wounded who returned to duty. This number is understandable only when we compare it with the First World War when only 40 to 45 percent returned to the front line. In general, during this difficult time, local doctors not only successfully performed operations and treated, but also continued to improve medicine. Even the simplest medicines were worth as gold. There was a pharmacy in October. Three hospitals ordered mixtures in this pharmacy. At that time, there were no mass blood transfusions. There were no ready-to-use sterile mixtures. But the employees of that pharmacy, who knew how to prepare those mixtures, worked for 24 hours. Here I have a photograph of the team of that pharmacy employees who worked during years of war. On August the 23rd, 1941, Stalin issued the order about award presentation to corps men and nurses, which equated saving the life of a wounded warrior to a feat of arms. This was how work on the battlefield was evaluated, but no less heroic struggle was waged in the home front at that time. Doctors, day and night, conquered every soldier from the death in difficult conditions.
Talking about evacuation, a month later, the evacuees began to arrive in our medical institute. 90 teachers arrived with their students in 1941 and in the first half of 1942. The number of students increased. If usually 150 people enrolled to the first course, 200 maximum, then in years of war, the number of students increased. There were more than 8,000 people, 1,138 students on the first year. Students were provided with a dormitory. It was very overcrowded. And our student, Abdi Salamova, who recently passed away, told me that there was no heating. It was winter. And when they entered the rooms from outside, because of heating of the bodies, trickles of water flowed down the walls. My father went to the front at the end of 1942. He was a teacher, and he said that the teachers felt sorry for the students. They especially did not go to the university's cafeteria because they were afraid that students wouldn't have enough food. Sometimes food remained, and in this case commission was created and the deed was signed about quantity of liters of soup remained in this pan. The pan was sealed, remained until the morning. And in the morning that soup was put on plates for students. Almost all the population of the Republic worked in such difficult conditions. The priority was to provide for the front. The slogan, everything for the front, everything for the victory, 100% reflected the realities of that time. Schools and hospitals were used as evacuation hospitals. Medical students took a short course and immediately started to work. Collective farms and state farms broke records for harvesting. <laughs> Even the livestock was moved as many as it was possible. Almost two million cattle were moved to the territory of Aktober and West Kazakhstan regions. When the occupied territory was liberated in 1944, they returned the evacuated cattle back. They returned it with litter to restore the destroyed economy of Voronezh and Olov regions. The evacuated enterprises were launched in a short time and after two to three months started to send military products to the front. One of such very interesting pages in the history of evacuation was the creation of the Almaty knitting factory, a cotton spinning factory. It was created on the basis of the Ivantevka factory that was evacuated from the Moscow region and the Kharkiv knitwear factory number no. one. In April 1942, Almaty knitting factory sent first products to the front. Here are the exhibits from the funds of the Museum of Almaty. I'm showing models of knitted underwear that our mothers and our grandmothers sent to the front. Almaty workers of our knitting factory dressed our fighters. They sent warm underwear to the front. All of that was for the winter period, of course, for winter fights. These are the mittens. Knitted, very interesting. Comforters that were worn under helmets, very necessary for military uniforms during the years of war. February 1942. Mom gave all her jewelry to the front needs. And today I went to the flea market. Before the war, Dad brought my mother beautiful shoes. I remember how she was happy and tried not to wear it without occasion. I changed these shoes for 10 potatoes and some sugar. As soon as the war ends, I will buy my mother new shoes. Today, I do not want to write anything else.
During the war, Almaty residents and residents of Almaty region donated personal savings. Literally what they had been saving for years, their hard-earned money. By January 1942, that was literally during half of the year, 2,333 grams of gold. There was more than 2 kilograms of gold, more than 109,000 kilograms of silver were donated to the defense fund. The Komsomol of Kazakhstan Air Squadron was built with the money that Almaty residents and residents of the region collected. In one of the tank columns, two units fought at the front, which were called the Collective Farmer of Kazakhstan and the resident of Almaty. During the years of war, the workers of Aktabe region collected 486 million rubles for the tank column, Komsomol member of Kazakhstan, for the tank column, collective farmers of Kazakhstan. Aktabe residents made a great contribution. Among them, we can of course name our heroes of socialist labor. Shiganak Bersiev, first of all, the famous plant grower who set a world record during the World War II. The leader of the Kulman Collective Farm, a well-known expert in the cultivation of millet, harvested 165 quintals of crop in 1941. The millet went not only to the needs of the Red Army and the population in the home front, but during the war years, the proceeds of its sale were used to purchase weapons. The monument of those years are the seeds of millet, which saved people from hunger and are stored in Leningrad Museum. Female breeders made a great contribution to the victory. There are two Kazakh women who at that time replaced their husbands. In 1942, Balim Trimova sent her husband to the front and became a herder. She was at the age of 27 and she raised 4,000 foals. Her work was adequately appreciated in 1949. She became the hero of socialist labor. Shikaza Kumaniyazova also replaced her husband. During the war, she increased the number of ewes from 100 to 133, 136 animals because of the litter. After the war, Kanish Imantayuli Sadbaev, already being the president of the Academy of Sciences in 1949, published the article in the Journal of the Academy of Sciences of the Kazakh SSR on the Victory Day. And he noted that during the war, Kazakhstan gave the country 70% of the ores, 90% of the copper was produced in Kazakhstan, and each ninth bullet out of 10 was cast from Kazakh lead. It was 1942. Every day, Kazakhstan sent the necessary products to the front. In the home front, the population of the whole republic worked almost without stops. More than a million Kazakhstanis at that time were in the battle zone. How the country experienced this period, who were that people who gave us a peaceful sky, are in the project Our Common Victory. To make everyone know, remember and honor. While battlefields were cooling down from blood and our common home was burning, war workers forged the victory likewise with their hard and righteous labor. While our fathers, sons and husbands were hunting down the fascist beast, my motherland worked in the rear with bleeding blisters day and night. Thin women's shoulders became tough, the children knew no childhood play at burning furnaces and in the fields, clenched teeth and doubled fists. All for the victory and all for the front, seasoning hot bread and smelting metal with tears of grief for those who fell and hope for those who might still return.
The memory of those heroic times is still alive and so it should remain. We are bowing low to the Soviet workers of the home front.